Butterfly and pollinator gardens are no different than a vegetable garden or a wildlife habitat project. For them to be successful, they must be planned with the end goal in mind. Of course, the goal of a pollinator garden is to attract pollinators. I'm Anthony with Backyard Ecology, and today I'm gonna to tell you a system I like to call the four threes for happy bees. This system works for all pollinators, not just bees. But try rhyming pollinator with a number. At the end, I am gonna give you a bonus tip that will help take your pollinator and butterfly gardens to the next level, so be sure to stick around for that. The first set of threes deals with the seasons. When thinking of butterfly and pollinator gardens, we are mainly concerned with the three seasons of spring, summer, and fall, as far as bloom availability goes. Spring may include a little bit of late winter, and fall may stretch into early winter, depending on where you live. When planning your butterfly garden, make sure that there will be blooms available in each of the three pollinator seasons, so the pollinators always have a food source. The next group of threes is about the number of species blooming in each of the three seasons I just covered. At a minimum, there should be three species blooming in each season. More is better, and I encourage you to plant more species for each season if your space and budget allows. Diversity is good. If you love native plants and butterfly gardens, fly like a monarch and pollinate that like button. Now we come to flower color. If there should be three species blooming in each of the three seasons, they should also be of three different colors. Why? Because different types of pollinators and even different species of butterflies or native bees, or insert your favorite pollinator here, are attracted to different color flowers. By having a varied color palette, the number of species attracted to the garden is increased. If you can plant more than three colors, great. Again, diversity is the goal. Not to mention a garden filled with a rainbow of flower blooms is absolutely stunning. Need some more ideas for your pollinator garden that are super simple, quick, and best of all, free to do? Check out our book, Attract Pollinators and Wildlife to Your Yard, 15 Free and Easy Ways, available directly from us. There is a link in the description. The last set of threes goes along the lines of flower color and has to do with flower shape. The flower blooms in each season should have at least three different shapes. Again, this is due to species utilizing flowers that are shaped differently. While this may seem like a hard thing to do, if plants from three different families are chosen, there's a good chance they will be of different shapes and used by different groups of pollinators. When planned correctly, a pollinator garden should be a diverse place. All that diversity will draw a wide range of pollinators, keep them fed during the blooming season, and will also likely include a good selection of host plants for caterpillars. And that brings us to bonus tip time. Don't forget the grass. More specifically, native warm season grass. You may be thinking, it's a butterfly garden. Why would I wanna plant grass in it? Well, for starters, native warm season grasses are awesome. And some are downright beautiful, such as pink muley grass, split beard blue stem, and little blue stem. Plus, they are super hardy once established. They also give structure to the planting and add interest. A bonus to them is they are host plants for many butterflies and moths, such as the common wood nymph, and some species of bumblebees will nest in the base of the clumps. Keep the grasses to around 10% of the garden to ensure the flowers remain the stars of the show. To get a head start on picking out some flowers for the fall blooming season, check out this video on goldenrods, and be sure to get out and enjoy nature in your backyard.